good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world or what time you're watching this video. My name is Sartorius, and thank you for watching the newest episode of Art of Fighting Games. For those new to the series, this explains if you get a new fighting game on how you can get started. Today I'm going to be covering Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Without further ado, let's begin. This game has normal 2D fighting game movement. You hold forward to walk forward, hold back to walk back, you can duck, and you can jump. You can dash forward by pressing forward twice, and you can dash backwards by pressing back twice. There are two ways that you can jump in this game. You tap up to jump, or if you press down and then up, you get a super jump. You can super jump forwards, you can super jump backwards. Because this is a Street Fighter game, there are six attack buttons. Light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, light kick, medium kick, and heavy kick. You can do all of these attacks while crouching, or you can do all of these attacks while jumping. Your attacks will change if you're doing a jump in, light, medium, or heavy, punch, or kick. So if you notice, when I jump forward, her attacks are all different than when I was jumping neutral. Usually, crouching heavy kick is how you sweep, but third strike is very different. Characters have different sweep buttons. For example, Makoto sweep is crouching heavy punch. Dudley's sweep is crouching medium kick. His crouching heavy kick is a scoop. You throw by pressing light punch and light kick at the same time. You can direct your throw by pressing forward and throw, or back and throw. If you press medium kick and medium punch at the same time, you get this universal overhead attack. To prevent yourself from being grabbed, you have to press light punch and light kick at the same time to break your opponent's throw. Some characters have a third throw. If you just simply press both light punch and light kick without any directionals, you get this animation where you can actually press buttons to make the attack go by faster. If the attack is getting done to you, you can move your directionals around so that way you can escape the grab before it's finished. Here's what the grab looks like normally. And here's how much faster it looks when you mash during it. There is a mechanic in this game called Kara Throwing. The benefits of a Kara Throw is it gives you extra range to your throw. The best example that I can give is with Chun-Li. To execute a Kara Throw, you cancel a normal attack into the throw buttons. Each character's Kara Throw can be executed differently. For her, you press medium kick and both light kick and light punch. Here's what a missed throw looks like normally, and here's the range of a Kara throw. There are also Kara cancels. That would be canceling a normal move into a special move. To do a Kara cancel, I'm going to do it as Makoto. Here's where her overhead chop looks like normally, and you can see the increased range on the Kara cancel. To block, all you have to do is hold back to block. To block low, all you have to do is hold down and back. But you cannot block in the air. Because of the chip damage in this game, you can bypass it by parry. You can parry any normal attack in the game, and almost every super, except for Gil's Seraphic Wing super move, and any grab. In order to do so, you can parry any standing attack by pressing forward right as the attack is about to hit you. To parry a low attack, just press down right when the attack is about to hit you. And you can actually parry in the air while jumping. When you are knocked down on the floor, you can choose to ground tech. If you wish to ground tech, right when you hit the floor, you press down. Doing this will cause your character to stand up much faster than if they were hard knocked down. If you're knocked down on the floor and you do not wish to ground tech, you can use a special move to get up with an attack. These are wake up attacks. 
If you look underneath your health bar, there's a little transparent meter that's different sizes according to the character that you play. This is your stun meter. Your stun meter gets filled depending on how much damage you're taking in a short period of time or consecutively. When you fill up your stun meter, your character will become dizzy and you cannot attack for a short while. However, when you are in this stun state, you can move your directionals as fast as you can to wake your character up quicker. If you look on the bottom left corner of your screen, this is your meter. The amount of meter can change dependent on the super move that you choose for your character. Sometimes the meter will be a lot longer, it will be a lot shorter, or you can accumulate more than one. There are three ways you can gain meter in this game. The first is by whiffing either medium punch, medium kick, heavy kick, or heavy punch. The second is by actually getting hit. And the third way, which is the most fastest way, is by hitting your opponent. When you see your meter is not glowing, then this means that you cannot EX your moves. When your meter starts to glow, then that means that you can EX your move. In order to EX your move, I'm going to use this as an example. For Alex, I'm going to press quarter circle forward and any punch button, and he does this chop. To EX it, I'm going to do the same motion of quarter circle forward and press two punch buttons to EX my move. EX moves can sometimes be invulnerable, come out faster, do extra damage, or hit your opponent additional times. On a quick note, only Gil and Akuma cannot EX moves. While on the topic of special moves, every character plays very much different. Some characters in this game like Ryu or Ken, their moves are usually executed by doing quarter circles or a half circle. But there are characters who are like Remy and Q, which are charge characters. By doing these, these are the moves where you hold back and then press forward and an attack button for them to do a move. There is a way you can hide the charge by pressing down and back instead of just standing up and holding back and then pressing forward and the button of your choice. Next we have grappler characters whose moves are executed by doing a 180 motion on your controller and then pressing any punch button. But Alex, I would say, is a hybrid, which means he is a mix of all three that I just mentioned. He has quarter circle moves, he has grapple moves, and he has charge moves. Chun-Li and Necro are two characters in this game that have a rapid attack if you keep on pressing the same button. Chun-Li also has a half circle move, which is this fireball, and a charge move. If you hold down and press up and kick, it's her spinning bird kick. To discuss the importance of which attack button you use for this move, I'm going to pick Ryu. I'm going to use his hurricane kick, or as it's commonly referred to as the Tatsu. This is what it looks like using light kick, this is what it looks like using medium kick, and this is what it looks like using heavy kick. Light attacks are usually faster, more safer, and don't do much damage. The medium attacks are usually the ones that work in combo strings. And the heavy attacks are the ones that do the most damage, but they're a lot slower and more punishable. Staying on the topic of unique characters, every character in this game has a taunt. You can activate your taunt by pressing heavy punch and heavy kick at the same time. Every taunt in this game has different effects. Dudley's Rose can be used to hit opponents, and it increases his attack power for all of his moves. Q's taunt makes him pose, and it increases his defense, which can be stacked up to three times and last for the rest of the round. Sean's taunt is his basketball, which increases the stun of all of his moves, and can also be used to hit the opponent. Necro's taunt can be held, and the longer you hold it, the higher his attack power increases. Alex's taunt is pretty much the same. It increases his attack power the longer you hold it. But if you do not decide to hold it, you can increase his attack power in stacks up to four times. Akuma's taunt increases not only his attack power, but it also increases the stun damage for all of his moves. Chun-Li has four taunts which randomize. Each of her taunts start with the yawn. The yawn itself increases her stun gauge recovery. If she cracks her neck like you see here, it increases her attack power. If she rubs her shoulder, it increases her defense. Now if she cracks her back, it increases both her attack and her defense. Hugo's taunts are like Q's. 
It increases his defense power and can be stacked up to 4 times. But if you hold the taunt buttons down, it also increases his power for the throws. Elena's taunt can also be stacked up to 4 times and it increases the stun damage of her moves. It can also be used to hit the opponent. Ibuki's taunt increases her attack power, but only if her taunt hits the opponent. Ken's taunt increases the attack power of his moves. Makoto's taunt increases the stun gauge recovery, in addition to increasing all of her attack power. The increase depends on how long you hold down the taunt button. Oro's taunt lowers the stun gauge. Remy's taunt increases the stun damage of his attacks, and it can be stacked up to four times. Ryu's taunt increases his stun gauge recovery and can be stacked up to three times. Welve's taunt will make him invisible, and you can press taunt again to make him reappear. Yurian's taunt increases the attack power of all of his moves. You can use the taunt to knock down the opponent, but if you do so, you do not get the attack power bonus. Yang's taunt increases his attack power. And Yoon's taunt increases the attack power of all of his attacks. The longer you hold it, the higher the increase. You can use your hat to actually hit the opponent. This game has target combos. In order to do a target combo, it's usually combining two normal attacks. Every character has target combos except for Alex, Hugo, 12, and Q. I'll be displaying how to do them now. And usually, you can chain your target combos with special attacks. Now finally, your super attacks. Your super attacks are dependent on what you pick for your character before the match begins. That's what these are here. Each of them will tell you how to input your super attack. Some super attacks are strikes. Some are grabs. One of Remy's super arts is a parry. A few of them throw projectiles. And some do extra damage if you press every attack button as fast as you can while the attack is happening. You can also cancel normal moves into your super attacks. But in order to know what super art does what, 
You're going to have to experiment on your character quite a bit to familiarize yourself with all three of their super arts. And that's about it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This video was very enjoyable to make. I hope that you guys liked every bit of it. And I hope to see you guys on Fight Kato, however other way you can play Street Fighter 3 Dirt Strike. God bless and have a wonderful day.